Hello, brethren. That is a great pleasure to be with you this weekend. We are going to present a seminar from the GC Sabbath School Department. This weekend, we have three messages, one this evening, the second one tomorrow evening, and the third one on Sabbath afternoon. That's our suggestion, but you can adapt according to your needs, local needs. The first one, the message for today is Feed My Lambs. After his resurrection, Jesus met his disciples several times. One of these occasions was on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. At that time, Christ asked Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me more than these? He says unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He says unto him, Feed my lambs. This first qualification need in order to be successful evangelist is to love Jesus. Without loving the Lord, we cannot win souls for him. When we love Jesus, we are guided by his Holy Spirit to do the work Jesus has given to us to do. Here Christ gives priority of attention to the children and people new in the faith. Several times the Lord called the attention of his disciples to take care of the children. When the mothers brought their children to Jesus to receive his blessing, the disciples revealed how short-sighted they were when they rebuked the mothers, giving the impression that children are not important to Jesus. But the master rebuked his disciples and said unto them, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 19, 14. In reality, the best result in winning souls to Christ are found in child evangelism. And he shared to Peter, the Savior first bade him, Feed my lambs. And afterward commanded, Feed my sheep. In address the Apostle, Christ says to all his servants, Feed my lambs. When Jesus admonished his disciples not to despise the little ones, he addressed all disciples in all ages. His own love and care for children is a precious example for his followers. If teachers in the Sabbath school felt the love which they should feel for these lambs of the flock, many more souls would be one to the fold of Christ. At every suitable opportunity, let the story of Jesus' love be repeated to the children. And in every sermon, let a little corner be left for their benefit. The self of Christ may have lasting friends in these little ones, and his word may be to them as apples of golden picture of silver. In 1979, when I attended my first general conference delegation session held in Bushkill, Pennsylvania, United States, Brother Francisco de Vai, he called all the Brazilian delegates to his room and warned us not to neglect the children in our work. He made a very interesting point when he said, we spend a lot of money and effort to bring adults to church, but we neglect the children. Then he added, as a result of our neglect, our own children leave the church and go to the world to learn vice and bad habits. And then we work hard to bring them back to the fold. It would be much wiser to work to preserve them in the church. They already know our principles, and it is much easier to work with, wisely with them to keep them in our church. That, brother, that's a very important point. Then we spend a lot of money and work with adults from outside to bring them to the church. It's okay, but we neglect our own children. As a result of our neglect, they leave the church, they go to the world, they become lost. Then now we work hard to bring them back to correct their bad habits, bad customs. Since the inspiration says, why should not labor for the use in our borders be regarded as missionary work 
of the highest kind. It required the most delicate act, the most watchful consideration, the most earnest prayer for heavenly wisdom. The use are the object of Satan's special attacks, but kindness, courtesy, and the sympathy which flows from a heart filled with love to Jesus will gain their confidence and save them from many a snare of the enemy. The youth need more than a casual notice, more than an occasional word of encouragement. They need painstaking, prayerful, careful labor. He only whose heart is filled with love and sympathy will be able to reach those youth who are apparently careless and different. Not all can be helped in the same way. God deals with each according to his temperament and character, and we must cooperate with him. Often those whom we pass by with indifference because we judge them from outward appearance having them the best material for workers, and will repay all the effort bestowed on them. There must be more study given to the problem of how to deal with the youth, more earnest prayer for the wisdom that is needed in dealing with minds. A very important point mentioned by Sister White is that in every sermon presented to the church, we should separate a time to give special attention to the children, talking about Jesus' love for them, telling a simple Bible story to call their attention. Let us stress this point, brethren. When we present a sermon to the church, a divine service or some study, always the recommendation for uh, inspiration is that we should separate a time in that same sermon to give special attention to the children. For instance, 10, 15 minutes to give to the children and uh, half an hour to the adults. It will be very a very practical way to reach the children. Every sermon, in every meetings for the people, we should separate time for the children. Now, inspiration continues. It is still true that children are the most susceptible to the teaching of the gospel. Their hearts are open to divine influence and strong to retain the lesson received. The little children may be Christian, having experience in accord with their ears. They need to be educated in spiritual things, and parents should give them every advantage that they may form characters after the similitude of the character of Christ. Fathers and mothers. Then, brethren, beside the teachers, fathers and mothers, they should be involved in this work. But not only them, all the church should give full support to this work of evangelism, child evangelism. Fathers and mothers should look upon their children as younger members of the Lord's family. Commit to them to educate to heaven. The lesson that we ourselves learn from Christ should give to our children as the young mind can receive them. Little by little, opening to them the beauty of the Prince of Heaven. Thus, the Christian home becomes a school where the parents serve as under teachers, while Christ Himself is the chief instructor. You see, brethren, we should give special attention to the children, brethren, father, mothers, teachers, and all the members of the church, because the children are the treasure of the church. In working for the conversion of our children, we should not look for violent emotion as the essential evidence of conviction of sin. Nor it is necessary to know the exact time when they are converted. We should teach them to bring their sins to Jesus, asking for forgiveness, and believing that he pardoned and received them as he received the children when he was personally on earth. I would suggest, brother, you to make a research in the Bible and Spirit of Prophecy, how many times Christ dedicated attention and time to the children. You'll be surprised. Supporting our children's teachers. Brothers and sisters who feel the call to work with children should receive strong support from the church officers, as well as all the members of the church. 
when we are successful in bringing children to Jesus, we reach their parents as well. So the work of evangelizing the children brings plenty of good results. Brethren, uh, all those uh, brethren, brothers and sisters who are dedicated to teach children, they should receive full support of the church, financial support, moral support, spiritual support. They should be helped to how to work with our own children to bring them to Jesus. The local church should provide the, all the necessary material to help the teachers to evangelize the children. Besides that, parents and teachers should work in cooperation with each other. This is very essential action to make this vital work effective. In reality, the entire church should be involved in this blessed task. When Jesus told the disciples not to forbid the children to come to him, he was speaking to his followers in all ages, to officers of the church, to ministers, helpers, and all Christians. Jesus is drawing the children, and he bid us suffer them not to come, as if he would say, they will come if you do not hinder them. Then, Brad, we know that uh, God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, the angels, all of them, they are involved in the plan of salvation. And all of them that are involved, they have, have a special interest in our children. Then we as parents, we as teachers, we as members of the church, we should cooperate with the Lord to work for the children, to hope to bring them to Jesus. It is very, very nice work to do, brethren. It's much easier to work with children than with adults but we should work with them, with both of them, for sure. Let not your unchrist-like character misrepresent Jesus. Do not keep the little ones away from him by your coldness and harshness. Never give them cause to feel that heaven will not be a pleasant place to them if you are there. Do not speak of religion as something that children cannot understand or act if they were not expected to accept Christ in their childhood. Do not give them the false impression that the religion of Christ is a religion of gloom and that is in coming to the Savior. They must give, all, give up all that makes life joy joyful. Brother, I was reading about uh, how Christ used to work with children. He would attend their meetings, their, their recreation. He would uh, play with them. He, he would give them a flower. He will sing to them. We find this in the Spirit of Prophecy. I was very impressed with that. Christ separated time from his work to give attention to the children, to his, their mothers, their parents. And he was very successful in that. As the Holy Spirit moves upon the heart of the children, <clears throat> cooperate with his work. Teach them that the Savior is calling them, that nothing can give him greater joy than for them to give themselves to him in the bloom and freshness of their ears. In this inspired word, we are told that the parents need to represent Christ in their own character. Let us remember that our example is much more powerful than all the most beautiful words we might utter. Before preaching the gospel in words to our children, we need to preach the truth with our own life. Now, brethren, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, 4 to 8, we find these divine instructions. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee today shall be in thine heart. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest thou, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thy, thy ears, eyes. Thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house, 
and on thy gate. Brad, I would like to give special attention to this point here. We used to teach our children rules and regulations and instructions theoretically, but many times, brethren, our own characters, I'm talking about the parents, does not represent Jesus properly. Then, brethren, should be careful. Before trying to teach our children to Jesus, we need to go to Jesus our, ourselves. Then the parents should be converted first, and then they can work properly with success with their children. Because, brethren, the children, they look to our example more than they hear our words. Then we should give them a Christian example at home, and the church, and wherever we go. Then we have the great commandment, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. This commandment shall be in the heart of the parents, then they shall teach the word of this commandment to thy children in different ways. First come the example, then the theory. This is the divine method to win the children to the Lord. This is the central teaching to be taught in the Sabbath school, both at home and in the church. Let us feed the lambs. In the Sabbath school, we find the most fruitful field for if in the children's heart of the children in order to reveal Jesus to them. The teacher should, the teacher should reach them in their young lives by telling them about the Savior and showing special attention to their spiritual needs. Language appropriate to their age should be used, and the result will be excellent. When Christ comes in the cloud of heaven, those who will have dedicated their lives to work with children will be greatly surprised when they see the result of their work in behalf of those lambs of the Lord's flock. It really does pay to do child evangelism in the Sabbath school. Let us work on the guide of the Holy Spirit, and a great harvest of souls will await the consecrated Christian teachers. Uh, brethren, uh, I would like to stress this point, brethren. I think that we should do our work of evangelism with everyone as much as possible. But I believe that we should give priority to the children. When we reach the heart of a child, he will be used by the Holy Spirit to influence the, the, his own homes. When we reach people with the, the gospel, God will use them to reach other people. Then when we work with the children, they will be used by the Holy Spirit to benefit their own homes. Then our work will be successful. And we have before us a big harvest of souls for the kingdom of God. Brethren, I believe that we need to ask to the Lord, from the Lord, a revival in our midst to use Sabbath school as a powerful tool to reach our children, to reach our people, and to prepare them for the coming of Jesus. May the Lord help so that we can be instrumental in God's hand. May the Lord baptize us with the Holy Spirit so that we can be efficient instrument in God's hand to take the children to the feet of Jesus. That's my wish and prayer. And may the Lord bless all of you, all the teachers, all the parents, all the members of the church to give special attention to the children, to take them to the foot of the cross. May the Lord bless us. Amen.